So I don't usually read memoir for this blog, mostly because I'm not really interested in what's true and what's not true in a story. Because if a story's good, it will teach you something, or make you feel something, whether or not it's about something that actually happened. But I was curious about this memoir from the first time I heard about it, because it's written in second person. This is Winter Journal by Paul Auster. Second person. Okay, so this book is a memoir, but it's all about you. Or rather, for 230 pages, you are Paul Auster. Always lost. Always striking out in the wrong direction. Always going around in circles. You have suffered from a lifelong inability to orient yourself in space. And even in New York, the easiest of cities to negotiate, the city where you have spent the better part of your adulthood, you often run into trouble. Whenever you take the subway from Brooklyn to Manhattan, assuming you have boarded the correct train and are not traveling deeper into Brooklyn, you make a special point to stop for a moment, to get your bearings, once you've climbed the stairs to the street. And still, you head north instead of south, go east instead of west, and even when you try to outsmart yourself, knowing that your handicap will set you going in the wrong way, and therefore, to rectify the error, you do the opposite of what you were intending to do, go left instead of right, go right instead of left, and still you find yourself moving in the wrong direction, no matter how many adjustments you've made. As you can perhaps already tell, this has an interesting effect. This experience of being lost is so familiar, it could easily be you or me. But of course, it's not you or me, it's Paul Auster. At first, it kind of feels like you're waking up in a hospital ward and someone is trying to remind you who you are by telling you all the things you've done or places you've lived and people you know. It starts with childhood memories, childhood games, things you did in your house. It makes the text really intimate in some ways, but also creates a kind of distance, like you're looking at yourself through a foggy window. Then comes puberty, and at this point, I start struggling a bit with the second person. All of a sudden, gender really matters, and it gets a little strange. Especially because another thing that's different about this memoir is that it focuses a lot on physical experience, on the body. Instead of taking us through his career, and his accomplishments, and his different books, and how he wrote them or thought about them at different times, this book isn't about accomplishments at all. Again, this keeps Paul Auster very approachable. Written the right way, I guess anyone can feel like the common man. What presses in on you, what has always pressed in on you, the outside, meaning the air, or more precisely, your body in the air around you. The soles of your feet anchored to the ground, but all the rest of you exposed to the air. And that is where the story begins, in your body. And everything will end in the body as well. For now, you are thinking about the wind. Later, if time allows for it, you will think about the heat and the cold, the infinite varieties of rain, the fogs you have stumbled through like a man without eyes, the demented machine gun tattoo of hailstones clattering against the tile roof of the house in the VAR. So here we have an intimate experience of the body in relation to the air and the wind. But all of us have this experience because all of us breathe the air and all of us have been in some kind of storm or gale or stood on the top of a mountain and had the wind blow straight in our faces. Perhaps the question becomes, if this is a memoir, what makes Paul Auster Paul Auster? What makes his experience of the wind different from our experience of the wind? Or is it just that because this is Paul Auster's experience, it's his whether or not we recognize it as well? So I wonder if a memoir can be too relatable. Or maybe the idea is that every life has the same types of experiences, but your experience of the wind would still mean something because it would be yours. That play between common shared experience on one hand and the unique experiences of Paul Auster on the other hand that maybe we don't relate to are constantly going back and forth in this book. This is Paul Auster's Winter Journal and you're watching Brave Little Books.